The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. For starting today's talk, if you have any questions asked, then I can uh, use that as a to start the talk. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yes, yes, ask. To elaborate on that subject, if if the rest would like you to do so. Yeah, it is it is Thank one you. of the <laughs> important, but sometimes very difficult. Difficult means if you try to experience these things, it is not easy at the beginning. So important thing is first listen and understand and think wisely whether this can be true or false. That is the important thing because uh, this Dhamma we get first by listening to the people who practice this path to the deeper stages and really experience non-self nature within ourselves. So they speak and they introduce us this concept. So then we have to listen and think wisely and uh, then uh, you can understand, yes, this can be true. Then if you uh, examine your uh, body, bodily nature and body and mind, how it works, and uh, can we see a fixed personality within ourselves? So then if you examine this one, you can clearly understand there is no fixed personality within ourselves. This the system, within this system, we say self, but there is actually there is no self. Because it's always changing depending on causes and conditions. So this is the important thing to understand. That's why Lord Buddha introduced us to see it in many different ways. So then we have to think wisely and uh, examine how our mind and body works. Is there any fixed basis? Always, everywhere. But so then you see it is always changing. There is no fixed personality here, or fix the self, or I, me, myself. There is a, the, a flow, a way of happening things. So the way of uh, arising and passing away things within ourselves, within the system. You can say this is a body and mind system. Each and every uh, body have its own uh, set of uh, uh, past experiences, influence the mind always. So the five senses, not only uh, one consciousness, there are six classes of consciousnesses are there. So it works in such a way. So that means he always uh, the causes and conditions drive the mind. Mind, not only the mind, the, the other senses also. Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose, tongue, body, and mind consciousness arise depending on causes and conditions. Internal conditions and external conditions. So that's why Lord Buddha say internal faculties and external faculties. Lord Buddha talk about in this way. Try, try, try to describe the, the non-self nature we are experiencing. It is there is not there is no fixed person, not 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 a self there. So this uh, thing you have to understand in that way. The six. Uh, external faculties and six internal faculties. The eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind are internal sense bases or the internal faculties. External, he took as the, uh, the, the forms come to your eye, it is the rupa, the external. And the sound come to your ear is external faculty. And the, smell, taste, and uh, yeah, sight, uh, sounds come to your ear, and uh, taste, uh, no, uh, the smells come to your nose, and uh, taste come to your uh, tongue, and uh, 
touches that tangible things come to your body you take as a uh, external sense basis or external uh, faculties uh, then the consciousness if internal faculties have the consciousness as a prerequisite but when uh, that means see, there is an ability in internal faculties to arise consciousness so when the external faculties and internal faculties come together then consciousness arise because because existing external faculties and existing internal faculties consciousness arise once consciousness arise then the contact come to come into place then the contact come because conscious these three exist in the present moment external faculties internal faculties and consciousness therefore contact come to exist then, then when the contact comes then the forms feelings perceptions arise feelings perceptions and volitions arise that is how it works if there is no external faculties this this thing can't happen contact never happen not only that the consciousness also doesn't arise without having external faculty that is the important thing to understand consciousness arise because external faculties exist internal faculties exist and then consciousness arise and then contact happen because of that existing these three at, at once because sometimes external faculties exist internal faculties exist but consciousness doesn't arise because that depends on the the the, the behavior of internal faculties so these things we have to understand how this contact happen this is a natural phenomena there is no one is controlling these things because causes and conditions this uh, consciousness arise within ourselves the according to dhamma we, we uh, uh, as a human being uh, living as a human being this consciousness arise because mind the five sense consciousnesses are arise because mind is adverting these five senses and uh, uh, take uh, the consciousness means it has uh, forms feelings perceptions arise because mind want to get that input so mind depending on depend on uh, these five senses five sense objects that's why mind always ad adverting the five senses and take objects in and um, uh, enjoy it or associate with these five sense consciousnesses so that's why lord would say it depends on your conditioning you what you want is the prerequisite that is that based on your past karma past your habits past your past beliefs or past in intentions that's why the present moment consciousness arise and that consciousness conceive they, they understand things or perceptions arise depending on that consciousness totally based on your past karma what you want to see you see what you want to see not what there that is the thing you have to understand this seeing process is always happen depending on your past uh, the causes and conditions and the present moment which karma arise in in the present moment is also uncertain that depend some external influences can change which uh, karma arise in this moment it is it is not a certain thing it is uncertain thing that's why lord buddha say you can't see a fixed personality here this is uncertain process because you have many past karma you don't know which karma arise in this moment in front of uh, if, when an object come to you which karma arise within yourself and come to ripen and drives this mind and the we are which karma drives your eye consciousness ear tongue nose tongue body and mind so this is this is an uncertain thing but basically say the, the uh, our uh, eye ear nose tongue body drives by our past karma consciousness but not only that the present training also make it growing so you 
uh, you can train your eye to see different things. But mind is the one who give them the strong, the powerful uh, perceptions because mind develop perceptions in different ways and then feed back to the eye consciousness. Eye consciousness also develop always. It depends on, that is, that is why I always say the, this one is always updating. These five sense consciousnesses are always updating. But the, 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 the eye faculty means the rupa part, the, 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 that is a form and consciousness, both come together. Form, feelings, perceptions and volitions. All when come together, then we say the conscious eye is there. So the meaning is, there, there, there should be both parts should work together. But sometimes this, this form part can deteriorate and change. You don't have a control on these things. When you are go past stages of life, naturally this the material part of the eye getting weak. So then your seeing ability change. These are not under your control. It, it is a natural process. It is how it, is, it works. But your consciousness is there, but uh, the data input, that is the rupa, the, the, the forms come through your eye, getting changed. Sometimes forms can't come through your eye because the eye blocked by the cataract or something. So these things, how things are changing. So Lord Buddha say, you don't have a control on these things. In the same way, you don't have the control on your mind. because Not only mind, the consciousness, the five sense consciousness and mind consciousness all change depending on causes and conditions. The one cause is the, the karma, the past karma. And the present thing is what is in front of you is also affect to present moment consciousness. Because if someone comes scolding to you, so your mind quickly change and start reacting to it. That depends on your past karma. Past karma give the support. But your the, the state of mind change quickly. So that's why Lord Buddha say the, the, these things are not under your control. The external faculties and internal faculties are the main reasons. Then the consciousness and the, 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 the uh, forms, feelings, perceptions arise in, within yourself is totally based on external faculties and internal faculties. These, all, both these are always changing, subject to change. So that's why Lord Buddha say there is no fixed personality here. So this is the theory part, but you can experience. The, this is what you were introduced by Buddha. If you think wisely and check whether it is true or false within yourself, you see it is true. If you think back and think past what happened to you, then you clearly understand this is correct, this is true. We don't have a control within ourselves. It is a flow. It is when the things are coming, automatically things are happening. But Lord Buddha say, in other hand, if you once you listen to this thing, this kind of uh, teaching, and you think wisely, and you th start thinking, oh, this is not under my control. This is another class of thinking, or another way of seeing things. So once you have this kind of uh, way of seeing things then you, you know these things are actually make me suffer. So you try to leave it alone a little bit far, not to react fastly, not to engage with that mental work. You start uh, keep a distance to your uh, body and mind work. And that is another kind of uh, mind you are developing within yourself when you have this understanding and when you are using this this understanding this this knowledge when you are using this knowledge uh, your mind start behaving in a different way then your intentions become different because you know this is naturally happening within yourself you, within the system it is a part of the system because this part run under delusion that is lord buddha how lord buddha introduced this one because uh, avijja pachya sankara sankara pachya. This is the, the dependent origination uh, teach us in this. So if you know this consciousness always based on delusion. That's why uh, when the consciousness arise, the feelings, perceptions and volitions also arise. 
as a re result. So, Lord Buddha say this consciousness itself run by the past karma, and past karma always based on delusion. And this, so that's why Lord Buddha say, once this uh, uh, consciousness arise, the feelings and perceptions are there, because that is what you believe early, what you take, how you take things in. That is totally based on the upadana, what you take, took in early. So these feelings and perceptions are not a permanent thing. They are, they are changing depending on whatever you take now, change the next moment uh, feelings and perceptions. So that's why Lord Buddha say, if you hold on to one thing, you, you suffer. Then you see, if you understand the whole process, the, the big picture, the, the, what is going on here, then you leave a little bit far this one and you don't fool by the, this process. Or the, or the feelings and perceptions. You never get fooled by these things. You leave it alone. You see these things run by the delusion. These things are changing things. You just use it for your day-to-day -day work. Sometimes that depends on when you have this body and mind, you have to maintain it and work with it. So then you use it for your day-to-day. -day. But you know this, all these things run with the delusion because all these things are changing. But we, when we are working in day-to-day -day life, we take, it, take these things as the, the permanent, good, nice, bad, these things we think. But this goodness and bad, that's why I say good, bad, who knows? This good, bad, we take today, these things good, later you say this is no good. So that's why I say, Lord Buddha say, all these forms, feelings, perceptions and volitions are suffering. They, they, all five aggregates are suffering. So. So that's why Lord Buddha say you have to totally extinguish these things, let go things. And if you achieve total extinguishment, then there is no suffering. When you're associating with these five aggregates, you are suffering. Suffering itself, the five aggregates are suffering. Because non-self nature and impermanent nature. That is how Lord Buddha taught us this Dhamma. So we, we, we think wisely. And then you understand this is true. Then you have to practice it in your day-to-day -day life. Then you you cultivate the mind to leave, keep things little far. If you do, if you have to do things, you have then you follow the guidelines. Guidelines means you do only the good things. You don't do no don't want to do bad things. Why? You know all living beings, internal system and external system has no difference. All run under delusion. So all living beings, the minds, minds and bodies run under delusion. So therefore, if they do something wrong, something bad, you, you uh, do not hate them. You know, all, all, no one has a control with themselves. It is a, it is a natural process. You know it within yourself also. So that's why whatever thing arises within yourself also, you, you, you try to keep a distance and think twice and do things uh, if it is necessary. Otherwise, you just let go and free your mind from intentions. Intentions come from delusion. So they, then totally you let go the intentions and free your mind. So that is the, that is the, 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 the meaning of the path. Because uh, Lord Buddha say to achieve Nirodha, for achieving Nirodha, you have to let go all attachments. So how let go all attachment, stopping all intentions. How stopping intentions happen? When your mind are aware of this reality, or if you if you bear this uh, knowledge in your mind and attend to any object, then you are not attaching to that object. You just leave it alone. You you. Uh, you follow the intention if it is necessary. Otherwise, you let go the intention. Release your intention and let it go. Then the attachment also release. Then your mind release from involving in that object. So that is how you release your mind. So when you sit for meditation, that is samma vayama, samma sati, samma samadhi. When you are practicing it, you can then release the whole mind from attaching the five sense world first. And later you you, you can get the ability to let go your mind world also. First you release from the five sense world. 
So that is what Lord Buddha's path end with uh, the uh, jhana, the samma samadhi. When you are attaining samma samadhi, you are totally released from five sense world. That is the meaning of it. Then you know these five senses are not my, me, myself. It arises depending on causes and conditions. When the causes, causes and conditions ceases, all these five senses also disappear. So that, that, that is, if a person attain one, one jhana, and if he has this, this right view at the beginning, then he can, he, he have the understanding, yankinchi samude dhamman sabbanta nirodha dhammanti. Whatever thing arises here is subject to totally vanish and extinguish. So it is, it is a reality for him. Because once attaining jhana, you experience it within yourself. First you have the, the understanding about the teaching and you, you just check it with whatever thing you are experiencing. You see the truth within it. Then you follow this one up to that stage. You, you go beyond this human realm and go to the, the, the uh, fine material realm. That is how uh, the uh, Lord Buddha taught us. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that is important. That is Lord Buddha say, Sati Sampajanya. Sati Sampajanya is, is a, the thing you have to practice in your day-to-day -day life. That means you are practicing the right view. When you are practicing the right view, it is not just a tool for attaining Nibbana. It is the view of your seeing your the, everything. That's why Lord Buddha say, if a person have the Shatamaya, Shatamaya is, is something uh, the, 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 you use for doing something. Because that mind drives by craving. You believe craving is, is a helpful thing for, for uh, get something. So that is the worldly view. That is the, the deluded mind, how it works. So right view is you are, you are totally uh, accept. You, that means that, that is the meaning of Shraddha. If you have Shraddha, then you are not try to get something. You just let go and free from them. You know all this suffering is here. Yes. Yeah. But we, sorry, everyday life we're as mindful as possible yeah. and uh, we bring to, to bear on everyday life our best qualities, the qualities of compassion and loving kindness yeah. and so on. But in our everyday life we have to do yeah. and therefore we have to exercise the will. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. on the cushion yeah. or <laughs> in retreat we don't have to yeah. uh, exercise those things. Um, as I would under, is that a correct understanding? Yeah, that, there is. Uh, uh, you have to understand this Dhamma and Vinaya. There are two things. Because Lord Buddha said, that's why Lord Buddha's path uh, had uh, uh, right speech, right bodily action, and right, right livelihood. Then your part also covered by that one. But this right livelihood, right, right bodily action, and right verbal action should based on right view. You know, it is not just just uh, following a rule, but your view corrected these actions. That is that is a natural consequence. If you are if you are bearing this view, or if you are using this view, then the right intention arises de depending on that. That loving kindness come behind that one. So then you deal with objects in a different way. So that's why Lord Buddha say, when you go, when you have to go go to the job and do do work and uh, associating with other people who are living with you, then you know my consciousness and these consciousness have no difference based on different causes and conditions. These things rise and pass away. So you have kindness. 
to them. Loving kindness comes from the right view. That is something very deep, not by something you are trying to imitate or try to grasp and hold it in. But your, your view purifies this. You see in that way. So that's why you, you have loving kindness towards all living beings. You know this consciousness have no control within yourself. It is a part of the process. So the different karma create different different reactions. So you you have the loving kindness in yourself. That then you have good relationship with people. And you do anything you have to do in your day to day life with kind mind. Not not harming others. So your bodily action, verbal action naturally get purified. Your livelihood naturally get purified because right intention. Right intention comes because you are always using the right view. This is how it happens. So that's why Lord Buddha say this Pachavekana, when you are eating or the, when you are doing your day-to-day -day work, you have the, the wise reflection within yourself. Why we are why I, I should do this thing? Then you 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 know you, when you have to maintain your body, you have to eat, you have to go to the toilet. Then you have to follow the the things you have to do in such a way with loving my, my the, the the kindness and softness and gentleness with your mind. So then uh, you follow the rules where you live. So, so you know that is the rules established. That is a convention. That is, uh, so we fa we respect to the conventions because we people come together and establish convention to make the the society the, keep peace and harmony among the people. So you respect to all these things because you know it is beneficial for the people and uh, they stop all uh, uh, unwholesome mind states because that is a convention. We then we, we respect to the conventions in that. Thing. So then whatever thing you are doing in your day-to-day -day life also, you have this, this understanding. Because convention come among the people who are living in this world, who, because all consciousnesses are based on delusion. So we accept it. So, so each and every mind works based on delusion. But these conventions are established to keep the the... Uh, the the wholesome states to and the keep the harmony among people. So they we respect to these things. Otherwise, it is difficult to live in the society, difficult to live in your home. If always quarreling and have unhappiness go among people, then it is difficult to live. So that's why Lord Buddha say you have to follow the, the guidelines of the society. Bhante, what you said, uh, put in different way. Uh, Buddha said that there is uh, no separation between the observer and what is observed. Yeah. So there's no separation. Yeah. At the time you see something, you have five aggregates of arising close to operation and creates an eye, a perception of eye. Yeah. Next time you focus on something else, mm. you create the second eye. Yeah. And it goes on and on like that. Yeah. It shows that what is you call I is a very transient thing yeah. and it keeps on moving. Yeah. That explains. Yeah. There's I, no I is a perception. Perception. Yeah. It all depends on your contact. Yeah. And the fire aggregates of arising in operation. Then you see the non self nature. That's no, question. no question. No question. So this is yeah, this is how we have to understand these things. And then uh, our reactions change when you are bearing this understanding. But in the same time, you have to understand there is no person is bearing this, this understanding. It is also, that, that is the non-self non view. You have to, you have, when you are using it, you have to be mindful on these things. Because no one is holding this view. If you are using, that is, uh, the Lord Buddha say this is all based on karma. How your intentions are maintaining. So if you are, if you are, uh, if you give your your uh, consent or the if you if you uh, uh, again and again use this uh, knowledge, then it strengthens within yourself. 
if you are not using because your past karma your past habits also come in and uh, dealing with objects with the the past karma that means your mind naturally runs on the delusion so the objects you take according to the ways you use in past that is the delusion works in the same time you try to to abandon the delusion and use the the right view so if you have the faith and confidence to using this one and when you are applying it again and again and that's why lord buddha say you have to use the four iddipada the chanda chitta virya vimansa then it start growing within yourself you should have the uh, consent or desire to use this view and you you have to uh, get uh, put an effort to use it and the, the uh, adjust your mind to work according to it and watch it whether it is working within yourself this is the chanda chitta vimansa you can explain they understand in that way and use it then when chanda chitta vimansa arise because you have the faith and confidence towards this son that is the important thing. shraddha is the is the first indiya dharma if you don't have shraddha towards this uh, right view you don't use it can i just ask again really when one starts to understand the buddha's teachings one has to recondition one's mind uh, i had to be totally reconditioned from christianity not that there's there certainly there's morals and ethics and so on in christianity but in terms of the self and the soul so it it is a, a very big reconditioning process probably for everybody yeah yeah not only that actually the, the i i would like to say the even the even the buddhists have to recondition their minds because most of the buddhists are not real buddhists because people believe the karma according to the ancient ancient hindu tradition you know the people believe karma in that way people think we are bearing the karma there is i is holding karma and everything happened according to our past karma that is that is something wrong because no one here the holding because the karma arise in the present moment depending on causes and conditions if the causes and conditions are changing this karma never come and ripen in the present moment that is the important thing to understand if you are following dhamma and if you if you are mind using this samaditi the, the most of the akusala karma never come to your mind and ripen within your mind so that's why the people can attain nibbana otherwise you you never attain nibbana if you are holding all karma that is wrong view so that is that is the important thing to understand there is no i me myself here because the our traditional buddhism say or oh, everything happened to you based on your past karma that is wrong yeah, there is no yeah. fixed personality here the causes and conditions uh, come applies to causes and conditions yeah. not for a personality yeah yeah There's no personality yeah yeah so the causes that the and causes and conditions are also the change depending yeah, on the yeah, what, right. whatever yeah. you are associating in the present moment yeah, exactly that is the important thing we think the rules we get the it is not certain the karma is uncertain karma ripens if if there is good uh, soil to 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 the to, to, to yeah that is the thing i understand so the, another thing about this i business is that uh, we are all born mm. with the biggest uh, misconception of yeah. avijja yeah. of separate self otherwise you are not here yeah. we are here because we have yeah. thought yeah. at the beginning in the yeah. sansara yeah. there is a separate i yeah yeah so, yeah, so yeah. from the time you are born yeah. in the sansara yeah. we have to uncondition yeah. or decondition all the time all the time so so that is why yeah. people ask this question yeah. we are here because Yeah. we start in, it's in yeah. our dna yeah. it's in our dna yeah. so we have to really go yeah. deep and deep and understand yeah. that yeah yeah no actually this practice actually changed the view and uh, gradually abandoned not the knowledge but the practice practice deepen the knowledge practice is the important thing then then your mind does not engage with the 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 wrong view 
always engage with the right view. When you are engaging with the right view, the mind have the right intention, and then that mind is suitable for totally uh, uh, releasing from Pisces world and go to the the mind room, that is uh, the, the the jhana rooms. Then you you get much more clear view about what is five senses and how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Bhante. Okay. I, uh, I got a question. Uh, uh, it seems to me that the jhanas are really very deep meditative practices. Uh, how can a lay householder or just a lay follower yeah. uh, attain these um, deep states uh, without you know, becoming monks themselves? Or, so my question really is, is the jhana, are the jhanas necessary for uh, attaining um, enlightenment, or are they just another set of tools? No, Lord Buddha uh, haven't taught uh, without jhanas attaining nibbana. So the, he only taught uh, the the eightfold path is the only way for attaining nibbana. Only path is eightfold path. So the the this eightfold path. End with the, uh, the uh, jhana stages. Without attaining jhanas, you don't understand. The, you never experience the reality. That is the important thing. So attaining jhana is necessary at whatever stage. Because some, according to the Lord Buddha's teachings, if you read in some places, Lord Buddha say some people attain jhanas at their death moment. Because then automatically they release from the five senses. But because they have the right understanding, they experience it. Then they get the right uh, experience. And then their, their uh, wisdom, yeah, faculty arise because that experience. Because he knew about this thing early, but haven't experienced until that stage. So you have to experience. But you, the, the important thing is, you, the, the thing you can do in the present moment is practicing the right view. Once you are practicing the right view, then it naturally pur purify the way of, uh, the, the purify your intention. Naturally purify your intention. That purify all your bodily action, verbal actions, and then the, the, when you go to the Satipatthana, then it is the most helpful thing to uh, abandon the five sense sensual world, that is the, the karma chanda, you can let go the karma chanda because you don't have karma chanda if you practice the right view. The five sense, the, you, are, you don't have sensual, sensual desires. So associate with senses and get inputs from senses. You don't depend on senses, five senses, especially. Because as a human, we always depend on five senses. Basically, because even we think, if we analyze whatever thing we are thinking is all, always based on five sense objects. Pante, a question just uh, from the previous question. Yeah. Um, so what you're saying is, um, as a lay person, we can reach up to a certain level, but um, to attain Nibbana or attain enlightenment, we have to uh, leave the lay life and then uh, go into the monastic life. Is that right? Or? For most people, it is correct. But some people have their previous life practices. Even when they, were living, when they are living in lay life, they can attain jhanas because they, they have practiced early. In different practices, because sometimes these jhanas are not only Buddhists, but other religions, or the people who believe other religions also attain jhanas. But they have the, the different view about the, the phenomena they are experiencing. But they can attain jhanas. Once they follow this path, sometimes if they have the, uh, the, this kind of past karma, this karma comes and ripens. They, they quickly attain jhanas. 
But once they attain jhanas, the, the result come back behind that. That is, you, you see your body and mind, is not, the body is not yours. It, it is a something, it is a very heavy thing. Then the, the sensual desires naturally get diminished. So then they, they do not want to enjoy the five sense world. So they do not want to live in the, the, the lay life. If they do not, uh, if they can let go easily, they let go. Otherwise, they, they do whatever thing they have to do in their lay life with a different mind, different understanding. Hello, Pandi. Um, I have a question. I just want a clarification. So, what you're saying is that it's karma um, that determines whatever we're doing. Is there any our free will that? We're faced with um, every day with options. You know, you do this or you do that. So you're saying that um, we don't have any um, um, free will at all. Our decision is all just based on karma. Yeah, yeah, mostly. Yeah, because you know, we can't say there is a free will. Will is always conditioned. There is no free will because that depends on. But the will is not a permanent thing. You are the, the, this moment will will be different to the next moment, the, the coming moment will is something different. It is It may be change depending on different causes and conditions. Can you understand? There is no free will. Will always govern by your, your past karma. But past karma, past is the past moment also can uh, give a different experience and change the next moment. Your will is a different thing. Can you understand? So now you, you say when you go to a shop, you want to buy something. Okay, you think, okay, this is, I know, this is a good thing. So then you, you look the other side, you see something else. Then you read the, the label. Oh, ah, this one may be much better than that one. Your will change <laughs> because the new input. <laughs> That's why the feel, will is not yours. Will depend on causes and conditions. Uh, I kind of have a bit of a problem with that one there, but what happens if someone actually committing something um, atrocious, like, you know, harm someone? So we're saying that is, it's just a past karma. That's not that person thinking. Yes, you are totally, you are thinking based on your past karma. It, it governs. But the past karma is not a fixed thing. That is the important thing to understand. The, every moment, the new new thing come and change the karma. That is the thing. People take the karma as the fixed thing. It, it, is, it is always changing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. When you listen to these kind of things and think wisely, then you, you take things in a different way. So then you don't uh, just uh, follow your thoughts. Then you, you, you try to filter things and do only the, you get the ability to keep a distance to your system. You don't follow your system. Whatever feelings, perceptions come, you, you, you get the ability to leave it alone and think twice. Because you, you take my, my thinking, my perceptions is not, may not correct. That kind of understanding you bear, because always these perceptions are based on delusion. Yeah, that, then you, if you have the understanding, all these perceptions based on causes and conditions, then you see, then Lord Buddha say the wholesome, unwholesome, how you def define. So if it is based on ill will, hatred, just abandon it. If you, if it be based on greed, just abandon it. Because all these things, hate, greed and hatred come because you think you are experiencing things. Experiencing is a process, natural process. Yeah, because if you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The meaning is, if you you are, you are the, the, uh, doing actually happen because your past conditioning. Once you listen to Dhamma, 
you act in a different way because you listen to them not because you can you understand the you we used to to speak but the mind is a process this consciousness is a process it processed so your intention is always processed one it then it arises because causes and conditions the, the previous causes and conditions previous uh, whatever intentions you took early this is right this is correct you took early that's why your the present moment decision arise in yourself based on your past uh takings that is a upadana this is you are you you taking early that view that intention you had early that is called karma 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 means chetanaham bikkave kammam vadami lord buddha told us in that because your previous intention previous intention arise based on karma base you, that, that is how you took it so you have to understand this is a whole process run under delusion so then you you if you have that understanding whatever intention come to you you little bit little far keep far and think twice whether it is because it comes from this teaching once you listen and if you have the faith and if you practice this way then you cultivate another type of karma then these two karma types are coming together so then one come first then you you then this again sometimes the first one go up to the end after some time you know i uh, i have done something foolish <laughs> yeah Pan yeah 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 some kusala kama the wholesome actions we learn from our parents yeah so we naturally automatically we do good thing but that is come from your the, the past habits and uh, the trainings pante earlier pante i have a question yeah yeah uh, pante earlier you mentioned the four idiopathas can you just elaborate a little bit more on those yeah the the chanda chitta viriya vimansa that is the pali terms chanda is the desire or your choice desire is a little bit rough word but i think choice is the much more correct what you choose in the present moment which one is good which one is bad what is what i have to do now so what you choose the choice is the first chanda should come then chitta chitta is the mind should ag agree to it the chanda also part of mind but if you if the mind follows the chanda then mind go according to the according to that subject that means if you want to if you have uh, the desire to uh, follow this view then once in front of obje object if this desire come to you okay i must see this thing as anicha dukanata so then your mind start working according to that that way the, the seeing things in the anicha dukanata so you have to put an effort to abandon unwholesome state and be with wholesome states if mind is, is governed by the other powers that means the uh, greed hatred so you have to abandon it so you have to mindful that means chanda chitta virivimans are work in in that way so virya is always the unwholesome abandoning unwholesome mind state and be with wholesome mind state and you you are watching what your uh, uh, way of seeing is successful or not that is vimansa and whatever what output came by uh, seeing things in this way that is just i i um, uh, explain it in briefly but you can uh, uh, understand in many the much more deeper ways also so chanda chitta vivimasa iddipada is uh, is the one we use from the small age up to now without having chanda chitta vivimasa this four iddipadas you can't do anything <laughs> basically you can't do anything if, if you learn a subject if you don't if you want to learn a subject if you don't have if you don't use this for idipadas you never learn it if you 
learn to do something. If you learn, if you want to cook a food in your kitchen, so you follow. You should follow the recipe in the same way. You should have chanda chitta virimans. Otherwise, you never successful in cooking that recipe. <laughs> You have to understand. This is the very basics. So, without having chanda chitta virya vimansa, you don't practice the right view and get the right result. If you practice right view, you get the right intention. When the mind, when the mind practicing right view, you get the right intention in that mind. Then, if there is something associated to the verbal action or bodily action or a li livelihood, then it purifies by this right intention. It is not something we are just act, the, the believing and doing. It is come from the root. That's why the sila bhata paramasa and sila had the difference. The sila bhata paramasa is you are following different kind of practices to purify yourself. That is, you are achieving something by doing. This is stop doing things. This is abandoning things. This is a totally different uh, way of happening things. This is, there is no cultivation, but stop cultivation. Then the unwholesome states disappear. Then leave there only the wholesome things. Then you leave the wholesome intentions. Abandon all unwholesome intention. So Chanda Chitta Virimansa, you have to use all, all the time. In your day-to-day -day life, you, you know very well, but you don't you you haven't identified because from small age we had Chanda Chitta Virimansa. That is a part of the human life. The, you talk a lot about the jhanas and of course you practice uh, some other uh, lot. Uh, the, in uh, practice of jhana, you experience non-self. That's what you said. That's just uh, experience. But the practice of vipassana, mm. developing the wisdom, mm. you have a deep vision and understanding and realization of anicca, dukkha, anatma, all three aspects of mm. Mm. reality. That is more solid. No, never become solid because it is uh, anatta is some level you can understand, but without totally extinguishing your your the, the five senses, you don't see that you exist without five senses. Can you understand? The, if you if you develop uh, the, your vipassana to jhana stages, it is it is yeah, correct. I mean, of course, then you. Yeah, vipassana that, means it, no, no, that's true. What with, I said, if you, you having that understanding, then you get into uh, the uh, the the uh, jhana state that the Buddha and the Arats did. Then they really enjoy the non-self uh, in their own life. Ah, yeah. Uh, because what I'm saying is to solidify that you have to practice uh, vipassana to the maximum. Like you said, all the uh, sadhus in India, they, yeah. they they get jhanas. I mean, they get nowhere. After that, they fall down, and just the same. No, the important thing to understand: this jhana practices are practices. You know, you know how to let go the five senses, but their view is wrong. That's why they they don't see it as a, the they don't see that aspect of their experience. They see something else, so they are focused to something else. That is the difference. But jhanas are jhanas, same. But they don't have the ability to go to the the nirodha samapatti level. But they they can develop up to eight eight samapatti. Can you understand? This is this is the difference because they 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 do not watch the place. You see whatever thing you want to see. That is the meaning. <laughs> you are not expecting a nirodha. You are just achieving things. Go to the different states. That is also they they are jhanas also jhanas. They attain jhanas.
but they have the different view. That's why they, they don't uh, get the view, they get the, the, the wisdom regarding this system because they believe the soul is experiencing things. I guess Sadhguru Bhattali is a yeah, vipassana yeah. practice. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. No, I, I want to tell some, a little yeah. bit uh, differently yeah. because the uh, according to the, the Lord Buddha talk about these uh, the other six people's jhanas, but Lord Buddha same time in some places say they are they are the mind jhanas also not deep like the Buddha's jhanas. So that is also important thing to understand because uh, the, when we are discussing with Ajahn Brahm, Ajahn Brahm has told many times uh, the most some because some views you can't go deeper stages of jhanas, so they can attain sometimes the first jhana based on some views. That means they can attain jhanas but can't go to the deeper stages of jhana. Can you understand? Mm -hmm. For some views. Uh, the wrong views, but can go deeper stages of jhanas, but not fully extinguishing the uh, the, uh, the the mind roam. That is the feelings and perceptions, because feelings and perceptions is the final experiencing thing. If you don't, you are not prepared to have no experience. You want to experience something. That is why neva sanya na sanya You are just you are you are. Hold on to the experiencing things, because you 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 have the the attachment to experiencing. You don't take it as suffering, so that is that is the important. That's why the the, the right view is important. Then you you let go that that uh, the, that part of experiencing. <laughs> 